related to history, I think you all know it better than than, than we did, and, and you can be very proud of uh, the very long history of cancer registration in the former Soviet Union. So ever since 1950s, when the first registries in Europe started to emerge, uh, cancer notification has been and reporting has been mandatory in the former Soviet Union. And the system of uh, reporting and registration is a bit different from international standards. It has been described in this publication that you see below, the cancer registration techniques uh, in the former Soviet Union, uh, which is a joint publication with, with IARC. And uh, for example, the differences are that the ICD-10 uh, or ICD coding is used for topography rather than ICD-O, which is an international standard. And uh, also one specificity is uh, the MD profile of medical statisticians. So this is, this is a really great advantage that you have medical doctors who are charged of uh, dealing with medical statistics and reporting to cancer registries. And I also hope there are uh, some of you listening in to the, to the session here. Uh, I was really impressed uh, two years ago when I visited cancer registry in uh, Tver and I saw the report dating back to 1949. And here in the uh, picture, you can see the, uh, actually it is made by colored pencil, the, the bar charts of uh, survival of different cancer sites. And as back as in 1983, there was a common publication but by IARC and the uh, Russian team on cancer incidents in the former uh, Soviet Union. So this is the, uh, actually, we can, we can see that now we have sometimes a gap in data, but the first incidence uh, data from Russia were published in this publication in 1983. Uh, also, Freddie has mentioned the cancer incidence in five continents publications, and he has shown how the number of registries participating has increased from just very few here in the first one in 1966 up to uh, over over 300 registries and 400 pub publications in uh, volume 11. So here I'm showing the volumes from 83 till 2007. And you can see that, oh, sorry. And you can see that already from the, from volume six from 1980s, uh, we had uh, registries from Belarus, Estonia, Latvia, and uh, St. Petersburg representing Russia included. So these are the, the compilations of the high quality cancer reg registry data worldwide. And what is also a really great advantage of data being published in the CI5 publications is that you can compare, there is the uh, analysis option in the, you can, you can look at the data online and you can compare your data with uh, all other registries worldwide that are, that are part of this, of this project. And then from 1980s, from volume seven, we had Lithuania included, and then from volume 10, we had also uh, Ukraine. And then the volume 11, I will, I will address a bit later. So now looking at the, what is the current station of cancer registration in the region, uh, Freddy has shown a similar graph. This, this is now showing the coverage by CI5 data, by high quality incidence data and uh, you can see that world that whereas the coverage in North America and Australia is, is very high in Europe it's 46 percent in Asia it's uh, 7 percent and uh, it's only 15 percent worldwide so there is a really this is this is really the the, the work where we uh, put our focus and uh, related to the registries from the region that are included in this uh, latest volume, volume five, uh, we had again, Belarus, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, uh, Ukraine. So they are like involved already, they had been included before. And from Russia, we had four regional registries, Arkhangelsk, Shelyabinsk, Karelia, and Samara, which is, which is actually for the first time that we had more than one uh, registry from Russia Inclu included, which is uh, really very informative because we can compare 
the regional differences and also with the uh, registries worldwide. But on the other hand, given that it is only four out of uh, more than 80 Russian regions, it's still a very, very modest representation to, to actually be able to uh, estimate what's, what's going on in the whole uh, federation. So why is it so? What are, what, and what are the current uh, challenges? In the region, uh, what we have seen working uh, with the countries over the last uh, six, seven years is that the cancer registration practices uh, diverged from the, from the originally same uh, system and that sometimes we even find that different registries in one country work in different way or uh, use a bit of different guidelines and uh, many of them do not actually use any guidelines but just do something that that has been done historically and that is maybe not anymore the best uh, practice so we we have the lack of comparability within within a particular country then between the countries in the region and then also very frequently uh, internationally uh, then the two challenges below are, are challenges that are sh not specific to the to the region but shared by many registries worldwide and this is that that currently in this time and age we are in a sort of uh, gap in a transition period where the paper-based reporting and paper notifications are really considered outdated and and obsolete and it's very hard to get paper report on anything but then on the other hand the e-health systems are not as yet developed well enough to really pro in most cases provide uh, completely electronic uh, replacement of all cancer registration uh, report uh, data collection reporting and, and and different processes and we have very f only a handful registries worldwide who are working really in fully uh, automated and fully electronic way and and the the last but not least and really commonly shared is that the registry work uh, frequently remains invisible so looking at at the region at all the medical statisticians who do such a such a great work who put so much effort and who, who produce one really big wealth of data but frequently the data is just uh, published in a report that that is not then further used neither for cancer control purposes neither for the for the for the research purposes so this is really a big task to to somehow become more visible and to advocate for for the data that are that are available because it is also reduced that the data gets uh, improved um, a, an important part of the, of the of the solution and of progress is to have uh, common standards and when we go to the countries this is, this is always one of our first recommendation to to apply international standards but it's and, and one, one of them is ICD-03 international classification for uh, diseases for oncology and then the third edition which is, which is currently in use has been recently translated to Russian to Georgian and to Azeri language and you can see the uh, the photos below and then the Russian translation is also available at the at Petrov Institute uh, uh, site and now I will tell something about what we have done within the global initiative for cancer registry development which we hope it's also a part of a of a solution I hope uh, many of you have heard of the GICR program which is within the cancer surveillance section of uh, IARC. Um, as Freddy has mentioned, IARC has been supporting uh, cancer epidemiology uh, research and the, uh, the data and cancer registries for more than 55 years. But uh, it is only with the starting of the GICR program in 2012 that we have uh, let go of the centralized approach of all the training and activities being at IARC, but we have uh, assumed a regional uh, approach to be able to have a more targeted uh, solutions for uh, 
different regions worldwide. And you have seen that the, uh, that the gap in the data is mostly in low and middle income countries. So we have uh, focused on working with the low and middle income countries in six regional hubs that you can see uh, in this uh, graph. So in, in each hub there is a principal investigator in the region and then there is a person working with the hub at IARC and for this blue one, Northern Africa, Central and Western Asia, uh, it is me who, who, who works with the, with the hub and the seat is in Izmir, so we call it, we nickname it Izmir Hub. And then the idea with the, the hubs is of course that they uh, provide for the region training, technical support, that they support networks and also uh, cancer control interventions. Uh, so, looking at this uh, Izmir hub, with, uh, which is my task within the, within the, the, the program, uh, is, you can see that here there is a, a Central, Central Asian countries are included. And, uh, well, I will not now comment the, 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 the situation with the, with the cancer uh, registration here, because Freddie, Freddie mentioned this briefly before, but actually uh, when we look at this map this is from the 1919 and i see that i should have included my first one from 19 uh, from 20 from 2014 uh, because at that one there was uh, many of these the whole region almost was gray we didn't know what's what was going on and we didn't know um, we didn't know people working in cancer registration uh, and what we have uh, realized at that time is also that if we want to to work with the registries in the region, we should develop uh, materials and uh, courses in Russian language. And then, having started work on working on that, uh, then we have also decided that we want to then disseminate this to to all Russian-speaking uh, registries. So, of course, including the Russian Federation as well, and and, and other countries where where Russian language is. Uh, spoken. So even if the hub is formally includes Central Asia, our activities are for all Russian-speaking countries. And maybe just to to uh, bring you a step back about the, what we do within the uh, GICR, what are our uh, areas of, of work. Uh, the first one, knowledge translation, mostly related to uh, edu training and education, and a large part of this is, is training the regional trainers and building capacity regionally. Um, our important regional partner is WHO Euro, so many activities are done together in collaboration with them. And then a recent concept that we have introduced in the GICR now, knowing the, the situation with the countries, we also know which we have also I uh, also able to see which countries are, are really committed to cancer registry development, where there is a political will and the uh, potential for progress. And uh, uh, some of those countries are then selected as GICR partner uh, countries where we provide more intensified and support, but then, uh, of course, with commitments from both sides. Uh, related to knowledge translation, uh, this has been uh, the GICR net is a network of regional uh, trainers who are trained at IARC uh, master classes and they really help us do all the work wo worldwide because the regional trainers uh, having been trained also can provide further training, further support for uh, people in their, in their region and also in uh, local languages and uh, by specific subject areas. And if you look at the GICR uh, website, you can see the, uh, the list of the regional trainers and you can also, you have this email here, so you can ask them a question. So uh, here, for example, Elena Ten, uh, our regional trainer from Kyrgyzstan, she is a trainer for coding, so one can ask her a question by, by uh, this icon here. And you can see here the, uh, the trainers from the region who participated at the master classes. So for Kanrek trainer is Anton Rizov, who will be uh, speaking in the next session, then Anton Barchuk, who is here and whom you, we all know very well. He was at our data quality master class. And then we had three, 
three uh, trainers from at the coding and staging masterclass, Olga and Yuri from Russia and Yelena from, from Kyrgyzstan. Uh, Another, I think, important step towards international standards was uh, translation of the technical report uh, on planning and developing cancer registries, which was done in collaboration with WHO Euro. Uh, you cannot see here, but this is like a very thin book of about 50 pages that doesn't go into very, it's not a textbook, but it provides a good overview of uh, the role and status of cancer registries, why sh what should they be used for, how to plan them, how to control the quality, and how to report the, the results. So this is, this is very useful also as an information for um, stakeholders. And uh, we had some, I think some of you who have been at the, at the courses might have a, a physical copy, a hard copy, uh, but it's also available for free download from the link before, uh, below from, from IARC publications. Um, then another important resource available in Russian since a couple of years ago is Kanrek 5 software. This is our free open source software developed by um, IARC that has all cancer registry functionalities. Uh, included uh, and so you can download it from the link here uh, it has been in use in the in Kyrgyzstan and in Azerbaijan so I know that many registries of course want to have their own software which is maybe linked to to, to, to something else but really the great advantage of of Kanrek is that uh, one does not need to think about software design because all the functionalities are already there and then there is also not need to be linked to IT firm for, for maintenance because it's, it's easy to maintain. And then there is the, our whole team of GICRnet regional trainers for Kanrek who can support the users if they have any, any problem. Uh, now coming to the courses in, in Russian. So we were really very proud to organize the, the, the first course in Kazakhstan in 20, 2014 and for the first time find out uh, something more about the cancer registration practices in the region about what uh, what issues people face and uh, then we even uh, compiled common uh, recommendations so-called Astana recommendations I have not uh, published them here and then we were even more happy to then do another basic course for the whole uh, region in Bishkek in 2016 and, and uh, see that there has been actually a lot of progress within these two years from, from 2014 till 2016. And then in the 2019, we have even had then an advanced course in, uh, in Chisinau and then the, and uh, Anton Barczuk, Anton Rizov were on the faculty of uh, that one. So we have also then, tra that there, so there, then we have also improved with the Russian speaking faculty because in the first course we had a lot of presentations that needed to be, to be translated. Um, at the same time here from the years 2015, 15, 15, 16, 17, uh, we had annual basic cancer registration courses only for Russian, uh, for Russian Federation. And uh, at each one, we had uh, about uh, third, almost uh, close to 30 regions covered. So we basically covered the whole Russian Federations by the basic cancer registration uh, courses. This was with, uh, also with the collaboration with WHO Euro. Um, at the same time, as you have seen, one of the, uh, the other big uh, part of the GICR activity is working uh, directly with countries, providing country-specific uh, recommendations. And of course, for this, it's usually we need to, to go there to, to have a site visit. So we have, in the period since 2013 till, uh, till last year, visited uh, all of the countries, some of them uh, more times. Uh, either our IARC team or the G or one of our GICR net trainers, and um, also the uh, some some teams have went for the uh, on-site training and Izmir cancer registry. So, for example, Kyrgyz 
team was uh, at Eastern Cancer Registry in 2017. So they were trained in basic registration procedures and in, in CANREG uh, use. Uh, coming now to partner countries, uh, we have one partner country from the region. This is from a very, very recent development from a couple of months ago. So our partner, current partner country is uh, Georgia. Uh, the activities in Georgia date from uh, 2014 uh, when there was an impact mission. So Anton Rizov was uh, visiting as a, as a mission expert. From 2015, they have started to uh, register cancer in to use can CANREC 5 software. However, in 2018, there was a decision that they want to use a new software, Unified Health Management Information System, for both cancer registration and then a part of software was for cancer registration and then there is another part that is for uh, screening. So they asked for our support in developing this uh, cancer uh, registration part and we had several uh, visits provided recommendations and are now working on a uh, common action plan. Uh, now, this is my last slide on the uh, future activities, how to, uh, how to develop uh, further. And uh, of course, there is a, now a, a, the COVID uh, presents a great challenge to the way we usually work by, by being in the country, by working directly with you face-to-face. Uh, -face. Uh, so then the, all these great uh, site visits, face-to-face -face courses are, are sort of on hold. But then uh, on the other hand, it also presents an opportunity for us to think how best to develop uh, online materials, uh, courses, workshops, and uh, training material that could be then delivered and, and translated to uh, different languages. So we are developing a new, we are working on the new textbook, Cancer Registration Principles and Methods, and uh, there will also be an e-learning program going uh, in parallel. And uh, this is done by a, by a modular uh, approach, but uh, whenever we, even at the start of developing materials, we always uh, point out that, that these materials need to, will need to be translated. So certainly uh, Russian is, is one of the important uh, areas for, for translation. And uh, the third point here is the research. So I think this, this is really an important part because we have seen that that there is a lot of data, there is a large history, there is a lot of cancer regist uh, registry operations going on in the region, but it, it remains very invisible. We don't we don't see the results, and we have seen in the in Freddie's presentation that that many of the data that he presented was uh, based on uh, estimates or based on mortality, whereas there is actually real incidence data, we just need to, to evaluate them and to, to see if there are gaps and, to, and to, 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 to publish more. So one very successful uh, project that we had was on stage distribution of breast and cervical cancers in the, the region and many, many countries have, have participated and now this is, this is coming towards the end, but I think this is just a, a, a kickstart for, the, for more collaborations to uh, to come. So this is the GICR team at IARC with our uh, principal investigators in the region, but of course without the whole network of GICR net trainers, it, uh, we would not be able to, to do all these activities. So I thank my, my team at IARC and I also thank all of you for, for your attention.